Hey, Michael here from Beer Baseball Blog, the adventures of craft beer and baseball. This is the Beer Baseball Blogcast, episode 29 for November 17th, 2020. Wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. And as always, we'd appreciate if you subscribe and turn on those notifications. Here is a lineup card for today. Fresh back from his trip from to Mexico, Puerto Vallarta, Angelo Trinidad. Welcome. In, per, in Puerto Vallarta yesterday and back in good old Aliso Viejo today. Nice. Everyone, how's everyone doing? Nice. Thank you for joining. And uh, we, we missed you on the, uh, on the Hoppy Hour, uh, but our next guest uh, was actually our guest on the Hoppy Hour uh, last Sunday. And he is from Indianapolis, Indiana. He is from Ballpark Hunter and Stadium Journey. Please welcome Mark Vicaz. Welcome. Thank you for having me here, guys. Had a lot of fun last Sunday. Look forward to doing it all over again tonight. Thank you so much, and we appreciate you being here. Kevin Lyon is uh, uh, on assignment, uh, should be here anytime. He's uh, he's doing a lot of uh, uh, data tracing uh, for this COVID-19. He's, he's on the case, um, and uh, he has a lot of hard work that – no, I'm just kidding. He's probably uh, stuck in traffic somewhere. I was trying to make it sound like he was really important. Uh but yeah, no, he's he's um, he's probably getting some beer from uh, Red Beards right now, so he'll be here uh, shortly. So we're, we're looking forward to him. So let's start out with uh, what are you drinking tonight? I'm actually going to start with our guest Mark, who had a beer that he was. Uh, you weren't afraid to drink it, but no, it was. Uh, no. But but uh, it was one that was probably not uh, a morning beer. Yes, yeah, so I had I had a growl or two that I want to finish before it went. Oh, there it is. You guys got pictures. So. Yes. Yeah, I found this at Kroger. It was a four pack and it was on sale for two ninety nine, and, and that's something you do not see. You see that once in a lifetime, kind of like the whale winning the Stanley Cup. So I decided to uh, grab four of these or three of these, I think, and uh, enjoy them while I can. So I got my nice glass here, a little hazy, slight coffee taste, and uh, I gotta say, this is a fine, good brew. I uh, would probably buy it at full price as well. It's uh, not too hoppy, not too coffee, and I think if uh, you're sort of in between a coffee beer of any flavor, this this might be the one for you. Now, if you hate coffee, stay away from it. Oh, you know, it? There are people who hate coffee, but uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoy it. You love coffee? Good. That's, yeah, you, know, I do. you might like it. I yes. Now, I don't think I'd drink this in the morning for work. <laughs> Stick to the other stuff. Seven uh, percent alcohol. So yeah, it's a little bit strong. So drink with caution. And being that I'm going to be home at, from work for the next few months, uh, this is just something to kind of enjoy while you're at home. And weather gets cold. Yes, so. it looks it looks fantastic. And actually, I was really it surprised about this nice. when I looked it up. That it's uh, the availability says on the website only California only. So really? the fact that you found it there was actually uh, really surprising to me. So, wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, uh, what a find. I should sell the rest. <laughs> the, heck, might, yeah. the, heck, the heck drinking it. It's like Definitely. finding it. Really? So it's only available on the West Coast. How the heck That's did what he, it said. How did he get out here? Don't know. Oh, Don't know. Kroger, what's Maybe going on, Kroger? Teleportation or something like that. <laughs> yeah, somebody snuck it out here. <laughs> okay. All right, Angelo, what, what did you have today? So tonight I'm drinking Lagunitas Brewing Co. Daytime uh, IPA. So this is a lighter uh, IPA. This is uh, in the, I guess, the low calorie or carb conscious uh, area, uh, beer area that they now have at uh, my local Ralph's. Uh, but this one is only 4% ABV. Uh, so I need to drink two of those Wizards and Gargoyles to, to, <laughs> oh, to match uh, or two of these to match one of those wizards and gargoyles um, and 31 IBU. So just right within my 30 to 50 wheelhouse. Uh, this one uh, I wanted to note 98 calories per can and only three net carbs per can. So for uh, carb conscious, low calorie conscious, uh, this is a good way to go. And it's, it's really, really good. Actually, it's very so the, light. So it, the, it, it doesn't compromise taste wise. No, I, it doesn't. And, and the few that I've tried carb conscious wise don't. There's another one um, uh, called Flyjack. Um, and I can't remember the, the Brewing Co. I think that was um, uh, Firestone Walker Brewing uh, Flyjack. 
Right. Yeah, that one's also three carbs, uh, like 99 calories. That's a, more of a citrus, uh, low cal- uh, low calorie carb conscious beer, and it's not. It doesn't sacrifice the taste at all. Right on. So yeah, I haven't tried that one. I I like the Lagunitas a lot. I, their IPAs are, are really good, and uh, so yeah, great choice. Uh, Kevin was actually uh, Kevin and I actually have a, a similar beer. So uh, this is uh, the Hills Are Alive IPA. So uh, this is the one with coffee. So th- he actually has a growler of this one. Um, but this is uh, this is the Hills Have IPA, and uh, you're going to be amazed when I tell you this, Angelo. So we've been uh, slowly working Angelo up the IBU scale. So. Um, 30 is about, you know, hoppy enough for him. So the higher you go in IBUs, the, the hoppier um, and bitter it is. And, and especially when the alcohol goes up, this beer right here is 8.1 ABV, oh. 117 Ooh. IBU. Wow. So uh, hoppy as, um, as heck and also higher alcohol content. So it's, it's one of those slow drinkers. And uh, this is actually a brewery that's uh, right down the street um, it's in Arcadia, California. I actually stumbled, uh, I, I stumbled in, not stumbled out of this, uh, brewery. <laughs> um, actually it was only three days open and, uh, I, I looked it up on untapped and I'm like, what is this brewery that I should know about? I walked in, it was like an, an oasis. Um, and their beers are, are super amazing. The atmosphere is great. And they've been around, I would say about three, uh, four years now. Um, so yeah, so definitely, um, check that out. Uh, I think Kevin was fooled by this. He thought it was, uh, the Hills are alive, uh, the, the movie. Um, mm. and so, but it's actually, uh, right here is the, um, there's a mountain range. And so, uh, it's, it's actually, they, they have actually a hot one with habanero. So, um, a couple months ago we had fires over here. So I'm not sure if it was located or because of those fires. Um, but, uh, but the uh, Mount Low Brewing is that Mount Low is the mountain range right there. So um, definitely one to check out if you're in uh, uh, outside of Pasadena. So uh, good stuff. So hopefully Kevin will come in and he can share his experiences with the uh, coffee version of this one. All right. So uh, let's start this out. This is this day in baseball history for November 17th. And uh, we're going to start with November 17th, 1960. Dick Grote, the Pittsburgh Pirates 30-year-old shortstop who led the league with a 325 average, is selected the National League's most valuable player. Uh, his uh, third baseman right next to him, so he was shortstop, right next to him, um, his partner uh, was actually second in Ballantine. His name was Don Hoke. Um, and uh, this man actually <laughs> was very disappointed when he was eighth on the ballot. So uh, just a youngster at the time, uh, but yeah, he would he would actually get the MVP award in 1966. Uh, what what uh, Mark? What do you know of the 1960 uh, Pittsburgh Pirates? Uh, they were the World Series champions in 1960 and uh, defeated the Yankees in Maserati's epic home run, clearing the Forbes Field fence, uh, first walk off homer in World Series history, and for only for only one for a game seven. So that's, that's right. uh, Still an iconic shot. Still a famous, uh, famous World Series. <coughs> Yankees outscored them. Yep. Yankees. Mickey Mantle still felt up until the day he died that he should have that the Yankees should have won that World Series. My attitude is: Did you guys win enough? <laughs> <laughs> like give Pittsburgh a shot. Big yeah, game, you can't. You, know. you can't win them all. That, that's for sure. Yeah. No, and it, you know, every time I think of the uh, sleeveless vest, you know, you think of that 1960 World Series. And, oh yeah. Uh, yes. You know, a, a heck of a team, and you know they repeated back in 1971 and 79. Unfortunately, they they haven't won a World Series since. So, you know, you look at 19, you know, you look at a 20 year span. The Pirates had three World Series. They're going on 40 years without one. So there, there's a city that has enough Super Bowl championships. They they can use a, a World Series championship. Oh <laughs> yeah, a great city. I, I was uh, I, I was going to try and make it to Pittsburgh this year, and uh, mm-hmm. Kevin was actually there, and he had a great time. Yeah, Pittsburgh. Uh, that's a great baseball city. Yeah, and we talked about Milwaukee on Sunday. Pittsburgh's just the same way, a mm-hmm. sneaky good city that you would not expect uh, for whatever reason. I don't know why people have a low opinion about Pittsburgh, but go there during the summer. You'll have a great time, I guarantee it. Yeah. Have you been to uh, Pittsburgh, Angelo? Uh, never to Pittsburgh, but I've been to Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. Philadelphia. I like Philadelphia, too. Yeah. 
All right, November 17th, 1964, Yogi Berra signs a two-year contract with the Mets as a player coach, which I did not know. Yeah. I thought he was only the manager. Uh, earning him a whopping $35,000 per season. Well, good for him. Uh, yeah. yeah, he uh, took over the manager roles in 1972 after the untimely death of uh, Gil Hodges. Uh, so he was a coach there. Right when the Yankees started stinking and right when the Mets started, becoming a, a much better team. So he was with the club for a good a good part of that success. And then he jumped over to the Yankees in 75, 76, when the Yankees started doing well again. That's so right. That's Yogi's, right. Kind of, Yogi's kind of like a good luck charm. So, uh, yeah, he was the manager there for 72 to 75. When he passed away, I think the Mets were in the World Series that year in 2015. I still think they should have wore uh, his number eight or at least a memorial band on oh, their yeah. sleeve. Uh, yeah. You know, the, they were under the will ponds then. So it, those are the little things I, I hate about the Mets sometimes. You know, I know he wasn't known as a Met, but he was their coach. He was the manager. He led them to the 73 World Series. He's Yogi Berra, you know, yeah. give him some give him some respect. Yeah. And you, yeah. you could have just wore it during the playoffs and that's it. I don't know how much that would have cost you to put a number eight or an armband around. But uh, yeah, you know, a lot of former a lot of former greats joined the Mets during those uh, early runs. Warren Spahn was another gentleman and uh, Richie Ashburn uh, well past their prime though. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, definitely. And uh, uh, Willie Mays as well, right? Willie Mays. Yeah. 1972 to 73. Yep. Uh, yeah. Just, yeah. You know, it's yeah. great to have Willie Mays as a Met, but we would have loved him. <laughs> would have loved him a little bit better. He uh, had some issues in the outfield in that 73 world series that mm -hmm. they, they talk about, but you know, that happens yeah. to all of us. We get old. Yeah, <laughs> every day, every day. So the recently fired Yankee manager, uh, uh, Donnie, his familiar number eight, will collect two hits in his limited nine National League at bats. Oh wow, that's it. So yeah, so I I didn't even know that. So that that's pretty cool. And adding to the stream right now, oh, Kevin nice. Lyon. Made it. <laughs> Welcome, Kevin. Rocking Darn. the beans. I was really busy. I was at. I had to do extra COVID tracing today. <laughs> so I was. I, that wasn't a lie on my part. <laughs> uh, no, I'm lying actually. You know, it's not like I'm watching the show on my drive home, sitting in traffic. Oh, nice. So, right on. Glad to have you on here. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's see how this. What do you see the IBU is on on this? A hundred and what? One seventeen. Because I could tell when I had the regular version. I mean, I don't know how the cop. Wow, it smells very coffee. And I love that we have two copy height BAs today. We it's do. Really what are the chances of that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. November 17th, 1971, <laughs> Vita Blue becomes the youngest player ever to win the MVP award. The 22-year-old A Southpaw is only the fifth hurler to capture both the Cy Young Award and MVP in the same season, joining Don Newcomb, Sandy Koufax, Bob Gibson, and Denny McLean. So, um, yeah, we, we talked about this in an earlier uh, broadcast, uh, how dominant his season was uh, in 71. It was outstanding. Yeah, he uh, also, there, there's, I don't know if this is still true, but for the longest time, he was the last switch hitter in the American League to win the MVP. Wow. Wow. Because back then, you know, you can still hit. I don't know if that's still the case, but that was a, a trivia quiz I heard a few years ago. Wow. wow, that's that's incredible. <laughs> Who uh, even do, that's, that's yeah, so, it's that's so you would never expect it. You know, uh, yeah. you know, uh, Eddie Murray never won the uh, MVP during his time in the American League, so I, I can't can't think of anybody recently. You know, yeah. But and this is interesting too because this is the year before they started. They won the three World Series in a row. You know, this team's not even at their peak yet. You know, well, they, yeah, they won the division. Uh, right. They were an up and coming team. Yeah. And I, th I think Vida had 300 strikeouts that year. I mean, he just yeah. had a, a ridiculously good – I mean, not good, just a dominant year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, of course, Charlie Finley didn't want to pay him. Of course. <laughs> and he held out the next year and had a terrible year. But then he, he rebounded a few – you know, rebounded quickly. So, yeah, that 71 season, uh, the, that Oakland team was on the cusp of, of greatness. And, you know, three in a row the, yeah. next, the next three years. So, Yep, good stuff. November 17th, 1975, the Braves trade 27-year-old Dusty Baker along with utility player Ed Goodson to the Dodgers. 
for veteran slugger Jimmy Wynn, Lee Lacey, Tom Pesorek, and Jerry Royster. The hard-hitting outfielder will play a key role for his, his new team, helping the Los Angeles Dodgers win pennants in 77 and 78 and the World Series in 1981. Now, the only reason why I bring this up, it's, it's cool to see an old picture of uh, Dusty Baker. Well, can um, I ask a question? In the sure. episode Keenan Thompson. What's he that? Like, he looks like Keenan Thompson from he episode. He sure does, doesn't he? I'm like, I look at him going, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> What's like up Dusty with that? A little What's slimmer than Keenan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I, I see it. I can see Keenan. Yeah, totally. So the reason why I bring this up, um, not so much for uh, Dusty Baker, uh, but actually for this man in the trade, Jerry Royster. Now, um, I think a modern day version version of uh, what Jerry Royster kind of turned out to be uh, is Chris Davis. Um, here was a, a player with a lot of potential that actually as he turned out to have miserable seasons. So let's let's concentrate on him for the, his next two years. He so he actually got to play. Um, so. Uh, he actually had a pretty productive career in the late seventies and early eighties, which was, um, he was a, a base stealer and, uh, but, but the 77 season is what he's kind of remembered for. Uh, he hit 216 and rarely got on base to, uh, do the thing that he was supposed to do with steel bases. And, um, uh, he had like a, a, a horrible, uh, fielding percentage as well. So, you know, he finally got a chance to play and, and, and just, just miserable stats. So uh, I was looking it up one time, and it said that he may have statistically had the worst season of any major league ball player ever, which is – that's 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 saying something. Um, and he's still got 28 RBIs, which is actually pretty decent for the 70s, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, that – that you know, we always hear about the Mets making terrible trades. That was yeah. a terrible trade for the Braves. Yes, exactly. Ooh. Wow. So, uh, Angela – who is uh, who would you say is is a because uh, uh, we we use Angelo as he's he's a younger voice in in our in our podcast so like mm. uh, who would be your uh, player that that um, probably didn't live up to his potential that you could probably um, single out? Ooh, um, let me see. Is there one that stands out? Because I would have said Chris Davis, because I remember seeing at an Angels game, I remember watching Chris Davis, and I go, oh, remember this guy? <laughs> and yeah. I was like, wow, he's like this guy is supposed to be like all everything. Uh, yeah, maybe not with like, you know, all the all the hype and 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 stuff like that as far as like you know, up and comer. Um, you know, the ones I can think of that, the ones that I, I can think of at least, you know, for the angels that I was really excited about that kind of, uh, you know, fizzled out was, you know, when, when we signed Tim Lincecum coming off of, you know, Tommy John, um, I even, <clears throat> I was a huge, uh, Johnny G of fan as well when, when we had him, uh, but nothing that was like anyone that came in with like all this hype, you know, surrounding them and ended up kind of being a dud as far as a younger player, obviously we, you know, the you know the the our deal the deal we uh signed Josh Hamilton to was <laughs> yeah yeah, was, yeah. It, was a huge bust but yeah nothing nothing like this or like Chris Davis yeah Matt Matt Harvey uh also Matt I thought, Harvey dude I dude I totally forgot he was <laughs> I, good I wanted to forget him too you know <laughs> oh my gosh and Matt Trevor Harvey Hill, with the Angels oh, yeah with the Angels yeah now, were, you, were you guys were you guys excited about getting him did you think he could redeem himself because as a Met fan, I hoped, but I, I, I knew. Hope Being an Angel fan, I hope, but I wasn't very optimistic, you know, because I was like, Ooh. and I'm like, oh, it's only three, four years off, but I already saw what happened with Lincecum and what yeah. I've seen for him, where they're hoping to get somebody and get him to come back, but it's never worked out for him, unfortunately, until this year with uh, Dylan Bundy. And part of that might be because, you know, the Angels have uh, Callaway now as a pitching coach. That That's a big thing that, you know, could help the Angels out over the next couple of years. Yeah, he, he, he let him stick to pitching. I, he wasn't a terrible Met manager, but yeah, wasn't the greatest. I mean, I think he had a winning record. Like yeah. he was two games above five hundred, so yeah. he's got that going for him. Here's a good one: uh, Pablo yeah, Sandoval on the Red Sox yeah, uh, yeah. from uh, any beer community. That yeah, I, I that's that was that's a great one uh, for sure. I, I you thought that he would at least you know not be terrible, but it was, oh. that was embarrassing. Well, I remember when the Mets uh, signed Jason Bay. We thought he was going to still be able to right. play baseball. Yeah. But, 
Oh Ooh. my gosh! Wow, I mean, it was he went from you know leading the league in RBIs and he was god awful. Yeah, when he came over, I, I mean, it was just like like there was you're just questioning what what happened. There was there was um you, you'll get a kick out of this um we'll probably talk a lot about the uh sorry West Coast stuff so you, you it's it's cool to hear the East Coast stuff but uh the one we're gonna we we're talking about was um uh, Andrew Jones when he came to the Dodgers uh he was up there and he had a season where like it didn't even look like he could play baseball like <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know we're going way back. What about what Dal Strawberry signed with the Dodgers? Yeah. He had one good year and then just fell off the face of the earth for about five seasons. Oh, man. It's well, it's, it's crazy. It's, well, it's one crazy. One for me always as a kid, and even I noticed it, was Bill Murphy after like 88, 89. I was just like, what happened to him? You know, I, I don't know what the heck happened. All of a sudden, his average dropped like 50 points and – he was still at some home runs, but I was just like, not the same guy. You know, it, it, it happens. I hate when yeah. that happens too, because it, you know, you put up a few more good years, you're probably in the Hall of Fame. Yep. Yeah. Easily. You know. He's on the fence now. He, yeah. it, it, it wasn't like Don Manley with the injuries. It's just yeah. you know, it was just like Joey Bats in Toronto. I mean, the guy was mashing. Mm -hmm. And he was a free agent. He and his numbers fell. He never got that big contract. And he was just bouncing from team to team. And, and you know, he's with the Braves, the Phillies, and the Mets, I think, in one year. Here, yeah. here, Mike. I got one more for you. Here, here, let's talk about a guy who had an amazing season and disappeared up this year, Kevin Moss. Let's go. Oh, oh. yeah. yeah Kevin <laughs> Moss. Oh, you're yeah. Like, yeah. It was like Kevin Moss and Dave Justice were like the two biggest things in baseball. You know, the same <laughs> time. You yeah, know. you go to a baseball card show. Kevin Moss, his car's going to be yeah. worth something, kid. Here, take it. You're yeah. like, oh, Bob, yeah. Bob, look what I got, a Kevin Moss card. And yeah. yeah. Like five cents now. Actually, that was a whole period because in the late 80s you had, if you went to card shows, all you heard about was like Greg Jeffries. Sorry to bring up a Met. Oh, yeah. Well, he was talking he like had, he had some decent yeah. years, but he was never never the phenom they expected him to be. Yeah. The stud. And then, like, Cliff Floyd was another guy who thought they were going to be like a, one of the greatest players in baseball. And he had a few mm -hmm. good years, but never meet, never met. No, him. no. I mean, they had quality years, but yeah. I mean, I think I think some guys just can't play in New York City. Yeah. Yeah. So right. let them go elsewhere. So on this date in 1976, Yankees catcher Thurman Munson uh, won the American League MVP over George Brett. Speaking of Royals, November 17th, 1983, <coughs> Willie Wilson, Willie Akins, and Jerry Martin become the first active players sent to prison for drug violations. Oh wow. I don't I don't even remember. I don't remember this at all. I don't I, remember I, that I, either. I totally if, remember if I this. On something, it's Willie Mays Akins. It is Willie May. I was going to bring that up. That's wow. very nice. I was going to. I was going to say, what is his middle name? Uh, middle. Uh, it's, name it's, it's there uh, on the autograph too. If that's him in the middle, right? Yes. Yes, it is. Wilson, though. Wow. Yeah. The so the, right, it looks like the real dealer. He's like he's yep. like the guy running it, and he's saying those guys out to distribute. You know. Yeah. Yep. And the the judge hand, hands down a three month sentence to all three members of the Royals for attempting for attempting to purchase cocaine. Oh, oh wow. just attempting. Wow. <laughs> can you imagine what the, the <laughs> yeah? Can you imagine the life sentence if they actually purchased it? Purchased yeah, it? I guess. Jeez. So on this date, uh, uh, in 87, Blue Jay, uh, uh, George Bell wins the MVP award. The 27-year-old Dominican outfielder hit 287, blasted 49 home runs, and drove in a lead leaguing 137 runs. For uh, And Toronto uh, came in second place. They had some good teams at the oh, end yeah. of the 80s. Oh, uh, yeah. And obviously yeah. at the beginning of the 90s when they started uh, obviously winning championships. No, you're absolutely right. He uh, that was old Exhibition Stadium that he was yep. playing at it as well. Which uh, is uh, buddy Dave Cotney, who I do a uh, Stadium Journey podcast, will tell you about those days, freezing your butt off watching the oh, Blue Jays play. Can't imagine playing baseball in that oh, weather. Oh, right rude. against the yeah. lake, Oof. man. With him in Barfield, that outfield, you know, I mean, those two lows, like, oh my gosh, you know, you yep. have to there. And I'm sure there's other guys are forgetting on that team. Oh yeah. So November 17th, 1992, Colorado selects right-hander David Need from the Braves as their first player in the expansion draft. How'd that work out for them? 
Well, uh, <laughs> uh, the 23-year-old right-hander who was 3-0 and for Atlanta uh, the season before will pitch uh, the first regular season game in Rockies history. Wow. Unfortunately, he was against Dwight Gooden uh, at Chase Stadium and lost 3 to nothing. So It wasn't at Mile High Stadium. Michael, that guy yeah, that, that looks like shit. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I was gonna, I was gonna make mention of him. Um, <laughs> he is wearing an eye patch. Uh, I didn't know if it was an injury or if he was just trying to be cool. I hope it was the latter. <laughs> yes. You know what? He's from Pittsburgh. You're welcome. Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So on November 17th, 2006, Frank Thomas, uh, not very comfortable in that Blue Jays out uh, jersey, uh, agrees to an $18 uh, million contract for a two-year deal with the Blue Jays. Uh, I believe he hit his 500th home run for the uh, Blue Jays. Um, uh, but yeah, so th but this wasn't a great time in his career. I think he even got released by the Blue Jays. Yeah, I think it wasn't he just coming off an a, a MVP-like year in Oakland? The year before, yeah. Well, it, it was. It was. Uh, it says here is like a comeback season for yeah. him. Yeah, yeah definitely. He finished fourth, and then he joins Toronto. I think he has a modest year. I think he hits about twenty five home runs. But then the next year, once he turns forty, he his numbers dip, and then he gets released after about twenty games in Toronto. Yeah, so, uh, unceremoniously yeah. was the beginning and the end. And unfortunately, that happens to all the greats. It's you know they're they're contributing, and then they hit that age. And yeah. It's like you're done. Hang yeah. up. So this um and now Angelo and and Kevin because they're Angels fans, so they get to see like Pujols. Do you think that like uh that Frank Thomas's career is uh reminiscent of of kind of like that, or is it are they two different careers? Um, I would say I would say two different careers. I mean, I mean, there's not really only been. You know, two seasons that I can think of that have been relative disappointments for for Pujols. I mean, he came in and he he did what everyone expected him to do and more. I mean, he let's not forget he had that random 2016 All Star season, right? And mm -hmm. ended up starting the game at first base because of uh, Maggie's injury. So um, I, I don't necessarily know if you could parallel the two, um, but I think um, but Pujols started playing at a much younger age than than Frank Thomas did also. So it's kind of hard to kind of compare the, mm. those parallels. Interesting. He's good now at this point. Like maybe now because, yeah. you know, he's his pulse is what, like 37, 38, something like that, I believe. He's 40. Oh, he's 40 now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, here, here's Frank Thomas at 40. So now, you know, he almost kind of can, but, you know, obviously he's just, I can't believe he's able to get a nine million dollar per year deal, even at that point. I was like, "Wow!" Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look at Pull Hose's overall numbers, he's he's batting two ninety nine. He's got three thousand two hundred thirty six hits, six hundred sixty two home runs, twenty one hundred on the dot RBIs. Yeah, I mean, this guy those rank among the all time greats. Oh, yeah, I mean, if you're just oh, looking yeah. at these numbers plus his MVPs. Yeah. Yeah, you you got to imagine you talk. We talked about you know the crazy that that Jays would give Frank Thomas nine million. I can't imagine two thousand five, two thousand six, Blue Jay attendance was through the roof. So it was probably more so of a maybe a ploy to get some butts in seats. Yeah, maybe to, hof to yeah. hopefully earn earn some of that nine million back and some incre yeah. incremental well, revenue. And not only to mention those those Blue Jay fans that all went the first day and ordered Frank Thomas jerseys yeah. and other merchandise you know what i mean oh. so a good way to kind of recoup uh you know some of that money that they yeah. paid him and i think they were they're were always a competitive team they just played in the same division with the yankees and the red sox mm -hmm. now i was up there in 2015 when they were in the uh playoffs and the the city fell in love with them again oh, so if this team wins and makes the playoffs yeah. people like them plus it, that that was that era when the jays had an identity crisis as you can you know, not only does Frank Thomas look weird in that uniform, yeah, the that uniform looks weird on him. Mm -hmm. Like that not a Blue Jays jersey. That helmet, I'm just like, what the what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. It's it's so crazy. You uh, see the way the, the Jays are written. I just saw AYS. I'm like, yeah, yeah. They went with this branding for a very short time. Yes. 
Yeah, I yeah. worked at a hat store in 03 when they introduced that, and they had like a gray silver cap. Everybody was buying it because they just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. So for a short period of time, I think merchandise sold, but then, yeah. okay, we want the old Blue Jays colors back, yeah, and, and yeah. rightfully so. They look so much better. E even wearing all sky blue jerseys, they look better. Yep, yep. So on this day in 2009, Zach Greinke uh, won the Cy Young Award, uh, joining uh, Steve Carlton of the 72 Phillies as the only hurlers to win the prestigious pitching prize while toiling for a last place club. And uh, Clayton Kershaw won uh, the Cy Young in uh, 2011. And uh, he, he had the NL Triple Crown, 2.28 uh, 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 ERA, striking out 248. Tied for most victories along with Arizona's Ian Kennedy at, at 21 oh, and five. So yeah. Ian Kennedy, I met him in uh, when he was playing in the minor leagues in uh, Scranton Wilkes Bear. Oh my god! Wow, I wow. heard haven't heard that name in years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he did one 20 games. I do remember that. Yeah, it's crazy. Games Arizona in 2011 is like what? How yeah, that totally. You know, it, it happens. Yeah. So lastly, uh, uh. The Braves trade Gold Glover, uh, Jason Hayward, Good. Um, and set up man Jordan Walden <laughs> <laughs> to the Cardinals for left handers Delby Miller and minor leaguer Tyrell Jenkins. So um, they started a rebuild. Uh, Hayward only had a year in St. Louis, uh, which I he, he was a great year, but then he went to the Cubs and won the championship in 2016. Um, but yeah, it's like. Uh, this one was actually kind of like, uh, I don't know. It, it kind of evened out a little bit. Uh, Jordan Walden was, I remember was hurt, um, as a Cardinal fan. So like, I, 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 I remember these things and, uh, Shelby Miller had a, actually a great, uh, uh, year for Atlanta and then went to Arizona and like almost pitched like a no hitter. Um, wow. so, but then he kind of fell off of baseball right after that. So, yeah. Yeah. And Hayward was projected to be a, you know, a big stud. He's had some productive years, but Never became uh, the, the star. Of course, injuries have been a, a key part of that, yeah. I believe. Yeah, go back to our topic earlier. Because those guys, you know, like, oh, they yeah. never met what their yeah. potential would have been. All right. So uh, before we get into pack wars, uh, we have we have so many people in the in the comments. I, I'm really uh, I can't even keep up with it. You know, one of our uh, Chad M who gave everybody the uh, the the gifts um, yeah, a couple weeks ago. Part. Thank you for joining us, uh, Tracy Loving uh sam sports shop uh bubble pug uh always uh always a favorite here rick uh ryan mccormick BT and, uh, <laughs> yeah thank you so much for joining and um so actually uh real quick um we we, we started with this at the top of the show uh, uh so let, let's recap that they've been very active on our on our twitter actually so uh we actually have a, a, somebody watching us on twitter a periscope um so uh kevin uh tell us the the beer that, that you have uh real quick it's the it's so this is from mount low brewing i saw a beer called the hills have ipa and i thought it had to do with the 70s like horror sci-fi film called the hills have eyes and then I realized later after I bought it, oh, it's named after the hills in the area. <laughs> so I, I bought um, womp, womp. It's all right for Michael Knight to split. And then they have a coffee version called The Hills Are Alive. And that's what I'm having. So it's it's interesting because I have a coffee IPA and Mark has his, which you'll get yeah. to. Yeah, what, what, what are the chances? You mentioned yeah. the habanero version of this, but they unfortunately were out. Otherwise, I was going to get that one originally. But this coffee one's good. It's... The coffee is nice and subtle, and it's still pretty hoppy. Or 100 and whatever number you said it was. 117. Uh, it might not be 117, but you got a little coffee in there. Give it a little more flavor. Yep. And then uh, uh, Angelo has the Lagunitas. Uh, yep. The daytime. Um, is that an IPA? Yeah, a yep. daytime IPA. Yeah. yeah. And then Mark has the Wizard and Gargoyles from Modern Times and Stone. He's the only yeah. person in Indianapolis who has that. Maybe the only person who has that. Oh, yes. I know. I, I should sell these. They're very they're very delicious, though. I gotta say, very smooth tasting. Yeah, because I was guess. Um, have you had stone? Is Stone or Modern Times available out there? Maybe Stone. Uh, no, mm -hmm. Modern Times I can find at Trader Joe's every oh, now okay. and then. They bust out okay. some Modern Times. It's like oh, one yeah. of the few few type of products they announce. And then I've had Stone before. I actually have one of their bottles that Will Wheaton, you know, contributed yeah. to. 
mm -hmm. uh, that I have uh, aging downstairs in my basement. So yeah, I'm familiar with stone. Yeah, that modern times is that's why I found that is a chair Joe's. That's why I was thinking you found that originally because I'm like, okay, yeah, no, no, I, that's where we usually I'm, go to get our beers. I'm a little bit upset with Trader Joe's, they usually have better beer production, like you know, they have a nice variety that they mix yeah. up. But the last few times, eh, kind of the same. I think it's the availability, line. like the COVID yeah. has really hit it, the can yes, shortage, and there's so many like uh, variables this year. Um, but, uh, yeah, even before we, that, though, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true, that's true. Either um, and then right. Ed, Ed uh, joining us uh, from uh, La Habra, right? Is he in La Habra or is that? I don't know if he's anymore, but that's who he's originally from. Uh, originally from La Habra. So uh, from Brooklyn. we're going to be technical Brooklyn, you know? Yeah, from, from Brooklyn, New York. Exactly. So um, he's from Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Where he grew up. Yeah. yeah. I've always wanted to say this because the DJs used to say this. Is Brooklyn in the house? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. I appreciate that. All right, so let's do Baseball Card Pack Wars. Uh, as always, we get all of our baseball cards from Hall of Fame Baseball Cards in Arcadia, California, except for Mark, who uh, <laughs> went to, where did, where did you go to find your, your 19 all packs? All right, I, I'm going to tell you this. First of all, I went to Target. Uh -oh. Then I went to Walmart. Uh -huh. None of them had them. They didn't have any cards. They, they had a bunch of uh, Panini stickers. So then yeah. I go to Meyer, which is a Midwest uh, super supermarket store like Walmart and Super Target, and they had five of these double packs. And I bumped into a high school kid, and I bumped into a gentleman my age, and he's telling me all about the trade hobby, how it's changed oh, no. since I was a kid. <laughs> never expected to have that conversation. Never expected to have trouble finding baseball cards. If I told my twelve-year-old self how hard it was to get these cards, he would be very disappointed. These are from twenty nineteen. Wow. These are not even 2020 cards. Oh, interesting. All right. We don't even have 2021 cards out. That that's probably has to do with the pandemic, oh. but yeah. Oh wow. Yep. Yeah, they're 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 just getting through 2020 right now. So but yeah. I got them. I got them. There you go. All right. Good. So these are the standings. Uh, I actually had a very rare um, four and zero uh, walk off. Two walk offs. Two uh, on. Yeah. That's the best. So, one we've had. Yes. And uh, so these are the standings. Um, Mark will be playing on the guest side, so you probably want to bring them up over 500. All so right. these sure. are the pack war rules. We're going to open our packs. A relic card knocks out one player of choice. An autograph card knocks out two. So in this scenario, there would actually still be one. Uh, you can actually pick who you want to knock out. Uh, the high number card uh, wins um, in round one and two. Uh, actually, in uh, yeah, in round, round one and two. We're gonna have to do it different, aren't we? Because he's got different cards than us. Well, I mean, we can, we can, we what we'll, we'll probably do at You're the end. I found them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so we're, we're, we'll probably do stipulations. Stipulation. We do stipulations before everything. We could do low card. That would make it very. Yeah, hard. you know that's a good idea. I, I almost had to go with WWE cards. That's how desperate I was getting. So <laughs> wow. I don't know what a Sasha Fierce would get you, or Sasha <laughs> Banks, I should say. That's gonna be the spinoff show eventually. All right. I think we're going to do a spin-off wrestling show. All right. So round one and two, uh, the, the they count for one point. The third round is the wild card round, so that, that'll be worth two. All right. um, and uh, we all drink when we get brewer cards. And uh, so let's do this. Let's uh, let our guests go first. And we're going We're going with a low card, right? Yeah, yes, sir. We'll go right. So go, go through the cards, and then at the end, we will um, uh, we will see what, so what low, our lowest low card, card is. I, I go through the number. Yeah, yeah. What, just show us the cards for right now, and show us uh, the card, and then at the, at the end, uh, look what your lowest card is. So all let's, right, let me, let me switch this around oh, real quick. Yeah, let's solve so you can see what he got here. There oh, we go. Let's get Mark. There we go. Wow. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Dennis Santana. <laughs> Dennis Santana. All right. I wish I had some some studs here. Daniel Ponce de Leon. Ponce de Leon. Oh, the sideway cards. I didn't know that's a nice looking card. Oh yeah. Except it's Brian McCann. Brian yeah. McCann, yeah. Manuel Margot. Although it's Manny right there. Manny, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Seth Lugo. I know him. Oh, there you go. Seth Lugo. Joey Gallo. Joey Gallo. That must be a uh, Topps 2019 update series. Yeah, I thought say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was this Will Smith versus Will Smith this year in baseball? Yeah. All right. Josh Bell. Yep. Thank you, Ed. 
Oh, here, here, here's a here's a stud. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, hey. look at that, Buster Posey, former MVP, and then rocking those awesome seventy. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. Of course, I, I hate how he wears them down to the ankles. Yes. It should yeah. be forbidden when you wear throwbacks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You should always wear it with the sanitaries and the. Yes. Yeah. Do I open that, both backs or do I just go? No. Stop with nope. that one. Nope. So uh, let's go with Angelo. Angelo, you're next. Which one are we doing? Are we doing okay. big league no. or pro debut? Uh, you pick. Right. We'll, do, right. we'll do pro debut. Okay. All right. Yeah. In the meantime, Mark can figure out his. Low card, and we're going to open our packs. All right. So, low card by number. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, we got uh, Josh Wolf, uh, GCL Mets. Uh, we got Drew Waters, uh, Gwinnett Stripers. Logan Driscoll, Tri City Dust Devils. Nice. The Dust Devils. We have a uh, insert tape measure power, uh, AZL White Sox, Andrew Vaughn. Cool. Uh, Damon Jones from the Lee Valley Iron Pigs. Nice. Zach Thompson from the GCL Cardinals. We have uh, Miguel Vargas from the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes. All right. And Brett Batty from the GCL Mets. Oh, Brett Batty. I know him. Future, <laughs> of, the Mets. Future of the Mets. Don't yeah. trade him. <laughs> All right, Kevin, you're up. All right, let's see. I, I get to open this pack this week. All right. Yes, yes. I already had halfway open from last week, and then I got shut We got shut out. Shut him down. Shut him, shut him down. down. Shut him down. Shut him down. Shut him down. Right. Shut him down. Kicking the California League, we got Xavier Edwards on the Lake Elsinore Storm. Uh, Nick Quintana from the West Michigan Whitecaps. Good ballpark. From the Gwinnett. Stripe, uh, Grant Stripers, uh, Kristen Pache. There you go. Yep, nice. That guy yeah. did something. He played with the Braves this year. Yep. Uh, from the AZL Dodgers, Diego Cataya. From the Palm Beach Cardinals, uh, Alvaro Sejas. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing it right. I might not be. All right. From the Boise Hawks, Aaron Shunk. From the West Michigan, I'm sorry, West Virginia Power. Logan Gilbert and from the Tri City Valley Cats, uh, Gray Kessinger. All right, all right. What do you got, Michael? Right. I also want to make mention of my um, my Jack my uh, Jet Hawks hurt. So um, Kevin yeah, told me last week to uh, look at the Jet Hawks, the Lancaster Jet Hawks. So this is the El Viento de Lancaster. Nice. So uh, the wind. Uh, because the Santa Ana winds uh, roll through here, it's uh, it actually was pretty bad when it was the fires were out here that the Santa Ana oh, winds God. were going to kick up. So yeah, that those was were pretty... by me and by you. Yep, especially you. Yes, this is uh, Lewin Davis from the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. All right, come on, we need the birds here. We need yes. a bird. Uh, Cameron Cannon from the uh, GCL Red Sox. Uh, Bra 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 Brian Rocio. From the uh, man, oh my gosh, Mahoning Valley Scrappers. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's where they charge you two dollars if you're walking to the stadium. If you're walking, oh, but and, and you're you're bypassing parking. Well, yes, it's uh, it's right next to a shopping mall, so a lot of people oh, okay. will park oh. in the shopping mall and walk over. But there's a gate. They may even charge you more now, but I find that kind of funny. I was hoping to go there, but I went to Cleveland during the spring, during no. like June. So it was just before they started the season. Kyron Paris from the uh, AZL uh, Angels. Uh, Mackenzie Gore, uh, ready uh, ready for flight. So, the, you know, he's going to be actually a, a big prospect uh, coming up uh, for the oh, uh, from yeah, for uh, the Padres. Uh, Tristan McKenzie, another guy who's supposed to have a good uh, career for the Akron Rubber Ducks. Uh, Joey Bart, another one who's going to be in the uh, – I think he was already up for the, the Giants this year. Maybe I think yep. so. Uh, and Edward Cabrera for the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. So, uh, yeah. Mark, what is Jumbo your uh, low card? Uh, low card is on uh, 95. 95. Angelo. 33. Ooh, that's going to be tough to beat. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Uh, Gray Kessinger, three. 
Ooh. Whoa. Ouch. Yeah, I know. And I can't come I can't come close to that. I have 56. So uh Kevin Lyon coming out All strong. Right. All right, I'll take it. Let's see. That was I found the pack of big league baseball I was half hoping last week when you pulled another autograph. <laughs> I think that's in this box. Yeah, details. Nice. Ultimo that's... Steve checking in with uh some uh hey. some heat for Angelo. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to uh, Big League Baseball for you, me, and Angelo. We're going to look for the low card, and let's see what I have in here. Oh, no, almost sent a card here. All right, to start off with, we have the American League slugging percentage leaders. That would be Mike Trout, Nelson Cruz, and Alex Bregman. Roberto Perez. Hunter Dozier. John Lester, Charlie Morton, uh, insert, it's the roll call of Cody Bellinger, my orange uh, variation is Mitch Haniger. Uh National, I'm sorry, American League RBI leaders, unfortunately for me it's American League, it's Jose Abreu, oh, this year's MVP by the way. Uh, Xander Bogarts and Jorge Soler. And let's see, Brandon Belt and Sonny Gray. No Brewers. Oh, no. I know. Where are all the Brewers at? So, Mark, why don't you go? All right. These are going to look like the 1970 baseball cards, oh, Todd. Yeah. Pretty cool. I, I, was, uh, I was always a fan of the 71 set. 71 was cool, yeah. Black I, border, the Nolan Ryan pitching with the RC Cola sign on the back. Yes, yes. Ooh, I love that. Oh, they actually kind of feel like 70, 1970 cards. Yeah. Oh, All look right. at that. Ooh, Yeah, they're on a ooh, pretty cool stock. Ooh, I got a stud here. I got one of my faves. Not yet. Uh, who is this? <laughs> Wellington yeah. Castillo. Yep. Michael Conforto. Yes. Oh, How do you like him? Love my photo, <laughs> Danny Duffy, and there, yeah, Rogan Order. I don't know if I'm That's saying right. that. Right. Rogned oh. Odor. Rogue Eesh, I was way off. <laughs> Max Welcome Scherzer. Up. That Three looks like an inside. Yeah, 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 that's, that's a good. variation. Yeah. That's an inch yeah. Caleb Coward. Yeah. Well, well I would call Caleb Coward of the County. Since Kenny Rogers was <laughs> mentioned earlier, I'll say that was our nickname for him. Avisel Garcia. I like these cards a lot here. And then I have a, a rookies, 19, 2019 Pirate Rookies. Oh, nice. Nick, oh, they Nick do it Garfield. like that. That's cool. That looks so great. Yeah, these are these are they did a really nice job yeah, with this. Super here. Cool. Yeah. And then James Paxton. Is oh, he wow. the is he the big maple? The big maple, yep. The yeah. big maple. Big maple. So. Yeah. All right. Angela, you're up. Is that 19? Right. Yeah. Big League Baseball 2020. All right. So starting out with uh, AL wins leaders, we got Verlander, Cole, and Eduardo Rodriguez. Right in front of your face. Put it in right in front of your face. Yeah, put that. We got Daniel Vogelbach. There you go. Jonathan Shoop. Shoop. Mike, Mike Moustakis. Here I go. Here I go. Uh, <laughs> NL batting average leaders. We got uh, Anthony Rendon. Uh, we have Kitel Marte. And get your beers ready for yeah. Aaron Yelich. There we go. And Bubble Puck says Abasel Garcia is a brewer. So. <laughs> yeah. We go, off the card. we go off the card in question. I'm sorry. And, and Vogelbach, too. He was a prior Mariner on that one. Yeah. Yeah, he was yep. a Mariner on that card. We have uh, insert defensive wizards, George Springer. You got Huge the orange crap. orange parallel of Oscar Mercado. Award winners, Mike Trout. Uh, outfielder, Randall Grishuk. And pitcher, Michael Baez. Nice. Nice. I also want to make mention, uh, by the way, um, your pit spitters hat, Mark. Oh, yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. I, I wanted to ask about that. So, what is that? Traverse City Pit Spitters. Uh, oh, they play okay. in the North Woods League. 
about six hours north, just shoot straight north from where I live, is the beautiful resort town of uh, Traverse City, Michigan, right off the lake, Lake Travis, plenty of wineries, a lot of breweries, different way of life. It, you don't even feel like you're in the Midwest, but they have this baseball team. Uh, I think it's their second or third year, and uh, just great atmosphere. Love this logo of the two, yeah, two cherries spitting. Yep. I had to buy a cap. Couldn't resist. Oh, yeah. yeah that's, that's it, it, great logo. Wonderful. And uh, if there's wineries and breweries and uh, and Midwest and baseball, yeah, I, I, I definitely don't want to go there no, as no. soon as this is all over. Yeah, that sounds like it sounds horrible. I mean, they had people. People <laughs> were playing volleyball right by the lake. People were just parking their cars and jumping into the lake to swim. <laughs> maybe it was maybe, maybe we should keep this all quiet because that's where I'm going right after okay. this all ends. Yeah. Sir Didi Gregorius. Oh, Didi. And get your beers ready. Yeah. Award winner Christian Yelich. All right. Max Scherzer. Kyle Schwarber, uh, another Wilson Contreras, but this was a variation of flipping out. Yeah, mm -hmm. Michael, was that Kyle Schwarber picture when you went and saw him? When that? Game yeah, was I think it, it might have been. Um, because look at him; it looks like he's getting doused in like something. It probably is, and if if they pan to the left a little bit, that's where I was sitting right there. So right, I there think it go. was. I think that was. I was actually at that game. Uh, this is a cool, this is actually a black and white variation of oh. Joe Musgrove. It's numbered out of 50. Nice. Um, so it's yes. black and white. So it's a um, very cool card. Nice. So there's not very many. I mean, the orange variations like this one of Hanser Alberto. So that's, you get one orange parallel, but so that's an extra one in here. Yeah. Black, yeah. And, black, and, uh, black and white on, according to the back of the pack is one in every 75 packs. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, we haven't seen wow. one, one of like, these. Yeah. Like every three boxes, then yeah, very good. Hunjin Ryu, uh, Andres Munoz, and uh, a this is awesome. This is actually uh, this is this is really cool. I actually saw him in his last week at Round Rock, uh, the Round Rock Express, oh, and here God. is award winner Jordan yeah. Alvarez. I saw That's him awesome. have a terrible two days, and uh, <laughs> then he got called up and he had like this amazing season, so. Uh, that was super cool. So, uh, Kevin, you went first. So, what's your low card? All right. Well, here, here's a tough one to beat. Roberto Perez is number 17. Oh, that. Me too. And uh, Mark, you went next? Uh, I have number 16. 16. Holy cow. <laughs> All right. Angelo. I have Jonathan Shoup. Number seven. Oh, wow. Are you ready for this? Let me oh, let me check my cards here. Or, by the way, okay, because that was your lowest because that was an insert. I wasn't yeah. going to say anything, but that was an insert. Yeah, it was an insert. But, but. <laughs> you, uh, I was, it counts. It counts. And because, it counts. because okay, I don't know. We'll we'll that next time if I get an insert. <laughs> what are the house rules? <laughs> because right. my, my insert is FO15. I would have actually been below your uh, oh, Kevin and, wow. and Mark. That's but then uh, Angelo wins the round. Wow. You want to hear something? So my, my low card was seven, right? Yeah. With the shoot. Yeah. My, uh, my low card on my insert is also seven. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Nicely yeah. done, Angelo. Yeah, All my right. low card is 26 on the insert. Okay. So you set the stipulations uh, for our wild card round. Um, oh, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. All right, so let's go with um, let's go with most catchers. Oh, oh wow. that's a that's a good one. That's a good uh, one. That could be tough. All right. All right. So, out of my baseballism bag, I pulled Tops Twenty Twenty Series Two. And that's good. That's twenty. That's fifteen cards. So 15 let's see. Cards. All right. So I have a pitcher, Derek Rodriguez. Third baseman, Miguel Sano. And by the way, autograph still counts, Mark. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I have catcher, Cam Gallagher. Oh my god. Pitcher, Ross Stripling. That's going to Big Teach 45 because the city wanted all the Dodgers. Yeah. Um, 
Arizona Diamondbacks pitcher, Archie Bradley. Pitcher, Tampa Bay Rays, Blake Snell. Uh, we have outfielder Austin Hayes from the Baltimore Orioles. First baseman Ryan O'Hearn from the KC Royals. Outfielder Ian Happ, Chicago Cubs. Third baseman Miguel uh, Anduiar. Second baseman Jonathan Shoup. Shortstop second baseman uh, Ire Adria Anzana. Oh my goodness. <laughs> outfielder oh, Avis, Avisael Garcia. A brewer. Uh, hey, 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 hey. Oh, it's a brewer. It's yeah, a brewer. Hey, come on. It's a brewer. Cheers. Get your cheers. We're all desperate. <laughs> and to round out my pack, I have Jose Trevino from the Texas Rangers catcher. Oh, wow. Yeah, there you go. So uh, how many? Two catchers. Two, two catchers. catchers. Wow. That's, all right, Mark, why don't you go next? Uh, I only have two packs. Were we supposed to buy more than two? No, no, no. Oh. Uh, so just just – Use use one pack for this one. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, no, you're good. So I just I just show you my catchers. Yeah, yeah. All right. I got a little confused there. No, no, no don't worry. All right. This one counts for two, so it's one pack. All two. right, I got Buster posing. Oh, that's right. You do have Buster and uh, Brian McCann. Uh oh. Anybody else? Got those two. Oh, we got a tie. Two two. And that's just from one pack, not the other one. Yeah, just yeah, one pack. Okay. Yeah. okay. Perfect. Yeah, it's all good. You go. Hey, you're tied. All right. There you go. Oh, wouldn't you know it? Oh, wow. Oh, funny. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Now it's a duel. Now it's a duel. All right. Let's see if we can get any catchers or something better than uh, catchers. All right. Let's see what we got here. Starting off with Robbie Ray, Chris the Taylor, or Christopher Scissorhands Sale. Nice. We <laughs> talked about that. Yeah, we did. June uh, Yamaguchi. Cal Crantrill. So far, all pitchers. Let's see how far it's going to go. Another pitcher, Brandon Workman. Joey Gallo. My first catcher, Tucker Barnhart. I got that. There you go. There's one. Uh, Will Smith on the Braves. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, Nick uh, Castellanos. A man we've talked about at length today, Mr. Chris Davis. Nice. Get your beers ready, ladies and gentlemen. Keston Hirota. Sit here. Ooh, this is a pretty card. Let me see. I know we got a couple of instances before this, the Mookie Betts. Yep. yep. Oh, that's hard. The top's uh, 2030. Mr. Mookie Betts. That's the yeah. next one. Big Teach 45 gets that one. So. Yep. All right. Uh, we got Eugenio Suarez and Ryan McCann. Unfortunately, I only got one one catcher. Our friend Ed says that um, lots of Mormon missionaries in Traverse City, too. Is oh. that, is that uh, Mark? I did not see any missionaries or Mormons. But well, well, you got the booze in the wineries. They're not going to yeah, be there. No, they're not going to be there. If, I'll look for the people drinking the, uh, you know, no caffeine Diet Coke next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, the baseballism bag is here. I don't think I have very many packs in here, but let me see. Oh, Archives Baseball 2020. Oh, so, uh, so tell Mark earlier, Mark, if you like that other pack you, uh, with the 70 style, you like these cards. They're all, okay. they're like years. You'll see when you open up there. Yeah. It's just, I love how they feel. I mean, they, they, they smell like yeah. they're from 1970s. They as well. have like a different, um, yeah. definitely oh, a different yeah. stock. Tim Lincecum, the freak. The freak. Mr. Tiger, Al Kaline. Oh, wow. The Jesus Lizard, Jesus Lazardo. That's a oh, somebody call him the, the Jesus Lizard, which is a great, uh, great 70, nickname. 74. Thank you yeah. for that. Tom mm, yeah. Terrific. Oh. Tom Seaver. Oh, wow. Man. Mr. Pa I had Mr. Tiger. Now I got Mr. Padre, Tony Gwynn. Wow. No catcher. 
unfortunately for nope. you. Uh, I saw this man make a really amazing catch in the Futures game in 2016 uh, in San Diego. Eloy Jimenez. Ooh. That's an insert. Very good. Yep. Uh, this is uh, Aaron Nola. So that's 2002, right? Yeah. I th yeah, I think so. And uh, Bryce Harper. So I think I'm out. Yep, you're um, out. What, really? what, I, what I can do is, so uh, so it's two two, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. uh, Kevin, uh, do out. you have another? Do you have another pack? I'm out. It's Mar I only have one catcher. Oh, you only it's have not, one. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's Mark and I. It's Sorry. Mark and Andrew. Down to them. I blew. I blew. I blew my spot. <laughs> okay. So do you have another pack, Angelo? Yeah, I do. Okay, so uh, you go for it, and I will play for Mark. I'll give, I'll play for him. Uh -oh. Is Mark okay with that? That's fine. Mark, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm out of Mark wants me to play for him. I had. Oh trouble. yeah, yeah. You can pick. You can pick. <laughs> I had trouble finding. I'll, I'll. Yeah, we'll we'll go, with Michael. Okay. All right. Yeah, I had trouble yeah, finding cards, so I'll stop. No worries. Right. Might regret that decision. We uh, we still st yeah, Kelly the same step, right? Yeah. Or we go, or do we default to high card on the? Yeah, let's go, let's go with high card. That'll okay. probably be the easiest. All right. So I have Ooh. a pack of two thousand. Can we go low card in the safe side in case you guys have like different, different series? sets? Let's see. Yeah, low card. Low right, card so makes I, sense. Yeah. So I have a twenty twenty tops heritage uh, minor league. Oh okay. wow! And then I'll I do the I'll one. do the cool. big league baseball for uh, right. for Mark. So this is one of the I packs I purchased. I'm not seen one, it. Yeah, this is one of the packs I. Uh, purchase to add to the, the pile and um i got a really cool card in there too which i don't know if that's gonna matter later but uh it'll be cool for me so anyway i got uh miguel vargas from the quakes didn't i get him in the pro debut or did i not was i think it, you this, might have so this that 70, 1971 design I love yeah it. Sue, so cool i got brandon marsh uh from the bay bears the mo mobile bay bears yeah. yep big prospect very really cool. good 2019 strikeout leaders, uh, Chris Bubik from the uh, Wilmington Blue Rocks, Joe Ryan from the uh, Montgomery Biscuits, and Tariq Scooball from the Erie Seawolves. Uh, unfortunately, no Brewers there. I was looking. Yeah. The, these cards are awesome. Uh, yeah. Jesus Sanchez from the New Orleans Baby Cakes. Yeah. Ooh, hated that name. And now, have, now the uh, Wichita Wind Surge. That's oh, right. Freudis Nova from the Quad City River Bandits. Hey, hey, representing. Representing. Represent. Very good. <laughs> um, so I got this really cool insert. It's a Ooh. baseball scratch off card of wow. Anthony Volpe. Oh, cool. So I rub the edge of the coin over any black space. When three outs are scratched off, the next player gets his turn. Rules are the same as baseball, play nine full innings. And it folds out and it's. Oh, how cool uh, is that? Yeah. No. What team uh, was he on? Does it say? Uh, this was. No, it doesn't say his hat. I don't know. It's. I, I should be able to remember, That's all. It's oh, um, Stan Island or Wilkes Stan Island Yankees. No, no, no. It's no. it's actually. Uh, oh, Stan yeah. oh, we lost Michael. He's gonna go get it. <laughs> let, let, let's see the card again. I should know. Yeah, that. It's uh, it's not no. focusing in. It's definitely there's a. Oh, is that Pulaski Yankees? Pulaski, I think so. In the, in the yeah, Happy yeah. League. Yep. Okay, I think so. so. Okay. That's a cool card, though. Yeah. Oh, oh there Bobby. it is. Oh, there it is. Pulaski. Yeah. Pulaski. Hey, well, I didn't realize their hat, their caps look like that's really interesting. Yeah, I got this I'm, for five bucks. Oh well. I had Bob, Bobby Dowback, Pawtucket Red Sox. All right. Uh, Aaron Brasho from the. Uh, Mahoing Valley Scrappers. Oh, wow. There we go. Two scrappers today. All yeah. right. And then I got uh, Hudson Head from the uh, AZL Padres. Hudson right. Head. Wow. That's that's, that's right. Be right there. I can't that, hear you now. Wasn't that a show on Fox? Yeah. That, that was Herman's Head. Yeah. Herman's Head. Right. Very good. <laughs> wow. That's way back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to prove how old I oh, am. Meanwhile, I did find these cards in my drawer. There's a, oh, an that's... actual 1972 Tom Seaver. Nice. Look at that. Tom Terrific. Oh, oh. So awesome. And then on the back, it's a uh, Reggie Jackson MVP card. Wow. Which I never liked this card. It just didn't really, it didn't look like Reggie to me. 
No. no. You know, it's kind of out of fielding, him fielding away. Yeah. Not- that's they could have came the tops, they could have came with a better better yeah. picture. Okay. I agree. All right. So this is for uh, Mark. I'll be playing for him. All right. So we're looking for catchers. So I'll no. uh, do the low card, low card. Low card. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um Chris Paddock. Cody Bellinger. Cole Hamels. Matt Olson, Renato Nunez. Uh, this is a uh, roll call. Aristides Okino. That's a cool card. That's very nice. I like the uh, a orange variation of Pete Alonso. Oh, there you go. Pete. That's a nice Polar one. Bear Pete. The Spaniard. Uh, Nelson Cruz. Uh, Mike Soroka. And Zach Wheeler. Oh. So, right. uh, what do you got, Angelo? Uh, I got Brandon Marsh as my low cards, 18. Oh. Ooh, that's going to be tough to beat. 172, 267. You said 18? Yep. Yeah. 21, 200. Oh, 21. Now, does. Actually, let me back that's it up good. here. I'm going to gonna, I'm gonna, I'm ask for a, judge, a judge's ruling on this one. So I have 29. I'm going to ask for a judge's ruling on this one. This one is RC2. I never knew if we counted inserts or not. Otherwise, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, this is controversial. I think it should be counted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What are the house rules? That's let's, yeah. uh, We never let's, let's, we don't do low card. So let's insert, defer, let's defer to uh, to one of our loyal viewers. No, oh, I like that. Yeah. So, so do we uh, <laughs> do we uh, count inserts or do we not count inserts? So why don't why don't um, why don't we? Well, you know what? It doesn't matter anyway. So as I look right. here. Oh. Yeah. Four. four. All right. Oh, there you go. So there we have go. a definitive winner, no matter what. So that's the topic of the uh, and and Ed did say and Ed did say no go for inserts. Yeah. So we should uh, okay. We, we should, should definitely we, inst- we, install we should, that. Okay. Yeah, that's we should. Roll. We should. Yeah, we should install, yeah, install that going fair. forward. I think that's fair. I think yeah, that's but, fair too because um, yeah, and we only knew this from going through the process, right? Right. Yeah, All right. We never do low card. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's right. do this. Go right. back here. Boom. All right, right. so let's end it out with some baseball trivia, and uh, you are free not to Google it. Uh, I want, I want some baseball knowledge here. So, um, this these are uh, difficult, but uh, I think you can do it. I'm, I trust all of you out there. So let me uh, throw this to the panel. Ready? Before Don Mattingly, who most recently won Manager of the Year after winning an MVP award as a player? So Don Mattingly won it this year. And he was the MVP. Um, and so who was the MVP? And I will give you a hint on this one. I think I know it, but I, I have a guess. I have a guess. I will I will give you a hint. It's within the last decade. Oh, um, I don't know. Not, not this decade, but the decade before. Okay, then I'm wrong. So the 2010s. Yes. Uh, Wait, no. are you saying the guy won the MVP? He won, he won the manager in the in the okay. 2010s Thank you. and i'm actually be right he actually my- won the mvp in the 80s oh um, i know i got oh, you I killed know me then because i i yeah. thought i had it i thought i, I know had, i think i know who it is you should have said that part you might give away too much there. i was thinking of somebody else um yeah so i was thinking of somebody else too <laughs> but yeah i do remember him 80s i was like ah that killed my yeah yeah Anybody you. in anybody in the comments? Uh, you have a, a choice. So so you guys feel good about your picks, Kevin and Mark? Well, I don't now. Yes. I, I thought I knew it, but I I'm not sure now. I don't need to think about it for a minute. And Mark's so confident. I'm like, how do I not know this instantly? Because <laughs> <laughs> he, he should not have won the MVP the year he won, if I remember. Oh. Right. Okay. Uh, should have been a player from my team. Yep. Well, you're 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 giving me way too many hints here. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think who won. I'm just going through the list of World Series champions from 2010 to 2019, and nothing really sticks out. Actually, he didn't uh, win a um, 
World Series. Oh, you're right. That's he a good just point. He just, he's just manager of the year. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, I don't know. Because I was thinking for sure Don Baylor, but he won the MVP in 79. <laughs> he did? Yeah. That's right. I was like, guess. I was like, That's right. Oh. That's a great guess because he did win manager of the year. That's right. Yeah. But gosh, now I'm just like, I'm going to feel like a numbskull and – you tell me who this is because I can't. I, I'm totally blanking. I can't. I can't get past Don Baylor. I gotta eliminate that from my head. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody in the comments? I mean, this is this. They can look it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look it up at this point. <laughs> no, on that. Okay. Uh, I'll give Wait, you whoa, two he's seconds. On, nah. whoa, he's on the other, the good stuff. Yeah. Just, nice. No, Doubling no down. No more. <laughs> <laughs> Angela, any guess at all? Oh, no. chat. Chad M actually has uh, Joe Torrey. That's a great oh. guess. Uh, this is not oh, it, but that great guess. Very good guess because he did like, win. 71, 1971 yeah. Eternals. Oh, wow. Very, very good that's guess. Very good. Oh, I, that's cool. A good guess. But God, the 80s. Yeah. No, no, nothing, Angelo? Nothing. Kevin, gonna, anything? I'm so mad at myself when you tell me this is. <laughs> okay. Gonna... Mark. I'm going to go with Kirk Gibson. Boom. Oh. Mm. 1988. Uh, he was the uh, the one yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I did this specifically to spite you, Kevin. I, I, and I remember yeah. he had a really good year in Arizona, where I assumed he won Manager of the Year. <clears throat> yep, I forgot he won MVP. Yeah, I oh yeah, me too. I mean, it should have been Dallas Strawberry, hands yeah. down. But you know, uh, yeah. uh, there's a there's a really great video, um, which biased. I will uh, put in our playlist. And uh, when he was manager of the Diamondbacks, he was uh, throwing batting practice or whatever. And he goes, um, it's, it's kind of like a wide shot. It was, it, it was, um, it was at Chase Field. And, and uh, it was like, I don't know if it was uh, before a game or whatever. And he goes, I'm going to show you how fast I, I can run to first base. So they, he runs to first base and he's booking and he's doing really good. And after he hits first base, he takes the most violent like bump. Like he goes like <clears throat> ass over tea kettle. Like he goes crazy oh, and oh. everybody like runs off the field. Like it was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> and, but, but it was very impressive for what uh, at the time, I think he was like 50 years old or whatever. He, it looked pretty good, but it, yeah, he did, it did not, it did not end as well as it started. <laughs> I couldn't even like barely walk in the 88 world series. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know. It was so weird like, to see this. You know? Yeah, and then uh, I think uh, either the next day or later that day, they, they actually put tape around, you know, like a like a body tape, uh, a chalk <laughs> tape funny. around there. It was pretty funny. So That's I'll definitely pull that out because that, that was a real – I totally remember that. Very All good. right, so uh, question number two. Which three pitchers have been unanimous Cy Young Award winners in back-to-back -back seasons? Oh. There's three of them. I can think of one. I can think of one, too. Okay. Back to back, so I can. And we've talked back. about this on the broadcast. Let me make so, my list. Exactly. Yes. My room. Unanimous, though. Wow. I might have two, but one of them, one of the two, I'm not as sure of. Okay, I think I have two, and the third one. Gosh, oh goodness. I like Mark thinking of the list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for doing that, Angela. Tell me what's going on. I can think of maybe one. So one was in the 60s, one yes. was in the 90s, oh. and one was in the late 90s. Oh, okay. I was originally thinking two in the 60s. Oh, two in the 60s. Okay. So you got but to pick one. I like one of mine. You said 80s and mid, no, mid 90s? I, nope. 60s, Yeah. Uh, middle 90s. Okay. And uh, late nineties. Okay. Okay. I might have an idea, but I might have an idea. And we've talked about one on the broadcast. Um, yeah. The one, you, the one from the, I know the one from the sixties we talked about in the broadcast. If I remember correctly. Oh yeah. That one too. Yeah. That one too. Oh, so oh, two oh. Of them, the third one might be the hard one. Okay. All right. Let me know when you want us to start giving you anything here. Okay. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> like I Jeopardy, it. like Jeopardy, Mark's still writing. Exactly. No, I'm, 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 okay. I think the one Mark and I are going to know 
I must. I mean, I'm pretty sure the '60s is Sandy. It has to be. That's it. Yep. Because right. originally I was thinking Bob Gibson, but I don't think he won two. Right. He yeah, won he back, six, to back. He won '68 and '70, but yeah, back now. Oh, back. okay. It wasn't back to back. Yeah. All right. Okay. So then '90s. Gosh, I'm like. Now that this is the one we've talked about, I would say it's like maybe two or three weeks ago. It's very, it's very unique the way he won it. Yeah, I, I, I think I know who this is. Go for it, M uh, Maddox. Yep, oh, he won it for two yeah. different teams: Cubs in '92, Braves in '93. That's yeah. it. Okay. And now, who's the third? The third is going to be tough. So late '90s. So late '90s, not '99. Late, late '90s. Okay. It's e it's either two of these. It's either Randy or Pedro. I was thinking Pedro. Yeah, I was thinking Pedro. Boom. Pedro. There you go. Yeah. Nailed it. Yeah. Nailed Good job. It. I'm, I'm Good glad job, I was trying to avoid. I think it's Pedro, but I couldn't think of anybody else. But Maddox, I totally liked on Maddox. Yeah. Yeah, he won so, four in a row, I believe. Wow. It's 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 so like, crazy. Yeah, that's crazy unanimous, you know. That's a good question. Thank you. Yep. I mean, that's yeah, that's harder because I know even Degrom did not get unanimous one year, yeah. and uh, the New York media laughed at it, but <laughs> doesn't yeah. matter. But Sandy, that just tells you how dominant that man was, oh my God. yeah, and how good he was. And, and anybody who says oh, he only had a few good years, he had a few good, amazing years. So, so let me let me ask you this real, real quick before we wrap up, uh, Mark. How do you feel about East Coast baseball to West Coast baseball? One of the things I notice about uh, East Coast and West Coast is that, like, I, I would die as a fan on the East Coast because to stay up all night and watch baseball, I would yeah. absolutely die. Um, You're absolutely right. And, and so, like, for instance, like Mike Trout, how much do you get to see Mike Trout? Uh, that is something, you know, I listen to, I listen, I still listen to New York radio, WFAN, and they talk about that a lot. You know, Mike Trout is the best baseball player in the major leagues, unless you have the MLB package or unless you're, st unless he's playing Yankees or the Mets or an East coast team, you don't really get to see how great he is. You just hear about how great he is. And, and, he's, I, from <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. and he's from South Jersey too. Yeah. So. It, it's, you know, a lot of people were shocked that he re-signed with the Angels, but, you know, that's – I'd love to have him as a Met. I mean, uh, sure. but you're right. Just uh, we don't get to see these star players. When it comes to MVP balloting, uh, there's always this argument, East Coast, West Coast bias. Uh, but you're right. We don't get to see a lot of these guys unless you have the package, unless, you know, you have a job that you don't have to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning for – you can stay up late. And, and even for me, when the Mets are, are on the West Coast, you know, the game starts at 10 o'clock. You may see the first hour or two if you're lucky. But I'm not staying up all night to watch them. I, I got to get up early. I yeah. got to get up early. So you're right, guys. Seeing guys like Mike Trout uh, is it, sad. Or just seeing how good Oakland was this year. You know, I, I also mm -hmm. pulled for the White Sox in the AL. I thought the White Sox were going to win that 2-0. Two, two but so what did I know? Right, right. <laughs> you know what, so, Michael? I first heard of that bias more in college football. Like when the yeah. people, writers would put together the ranking, they were, it's mostly East Coast writers, I'm guessing, because they thought, oh, this is a West Coast bias because a lot of these writers are not seeing like the California teams or like Washington, the Oregon teams, because their games sometimes don't start till 10 Eastern. That's a worst world. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, we could start watching NFL football at 10 o'clock in the morning if you want it, you know? Yeah, no, right. that's, and that's. Yeah. That's what my brother would tell me when he lived in Las Vegas. It was great yeah. waking up at 10 o'clock to watch the game. The yeah. Super Bowl, you know, when you have a Super Bowl party out here, depending on how late the game goes, I mean, right. you may not be done until 11, 1130. Yeah. And you got to clean up. You want to get up early. So, uh, you know, that's why. Right. That's why on a Sunday, do a yeah. Monday. Right. That's a, yeah. that's a great yeah. point. I, I mean, in the West Coast, you kind of forget these things. You know, like my wife grew up in, in Chicago. So. She would watch Saturday Night Live at at ten thirty instead of eleven thirty. So just yeah. even even an hour of oh yeah, uh, it's scheduled out. Everything starts an hour earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I just and I think everything starts out. I think things start late out here. Yeah. I, I mean, I love how Monday Night Football starts at eight. It probably could start at seven thirty. Yeah. You know, I. Yep. But it used to start at nine o'clock. It's like, damn, yeah. that's, that's yeah. late. You know, I'm I'm old yeah. now. I can't stay up like I used to. I'm not in college. Yeah. yeah. So like like, like Angel, like like how much like East Coast baseball do you get to watch? 
Uh, well, yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> uh, but, but, but with a job and everything, yeah. you probably watch less. Yeah, my, yeah, minus you know, mine. I mean, again, everything's all you know, kind of package based, right? Like, you know, we we only get what's what's on. But you know, a lot of East Coast teams are considered, you know, uh, high tier games. You know, so you see the Yankees a lot. You see, you know, the you know, you see the you know the Cubs a lot. You see. You know, I mean, you see, you know, you you see a lot of prominence uh, because of their because of the the value of the team. Whereas, you know, on the East Coast, it's it's different. You know what I mean? But uh, but yeah, I think it's all kind of package driven or or package based. If you have the MLB package, but yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, we have the luxury of you know watching a you know eight p.m. game starting on the East coast at five o'clock here, you know? Yeah. So uh, we, we definitely have an advantage when it comes to, you know, stuff like that for sure. Um, particularly with that super bowl party. Cause I, you know, I, until you brought that up, that's the first time, I, the first time wow. I ever thought so of that. What like, times, what times the super bowl party start for you? Yeah. yeah. Like it, start, it starts at like three thirty, four o'clock. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's nice. Another yeah. example would be like a big boxing or UFC fight, you know, yeah, start at like, the main card is at like seven o'clock or so here, and it's ten o'clock there. By yeah. then, it's the main event. It's like at least midnight on the East Coast, and for us, it's like yeah. ah, it's like ten o'clock. Well, I, I I think back to you know Kevin, the game you and I were at, the Red yeah. Sox and, and the Angels when it oh, went yeah. so when it went when it went to one a.m. our time. Yeah, it was yeah. four a, four a.m. in Boston. Were there any yeah, exactly. Red Sox fans still watching? Yeah, I, I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I know out here when I watch EPL games, English Premier League, mm -hmm. some of those games are at eight o'clock in the morning. Yep. Yeah. That's early, so I can only imagine on the West Coast. Yeah. But well, I mean, that's yeah. like World Cup. Like when the World Cup happens, you are know, up at five. Five. Sometimes it'd be like yeah, four, three, three in the morning. morning, and there'd be places there actually would there'll be, be bars. There'll be bars oh, yeah, open. Yeah. that early because all the bars open. They're like, okay, the bar can be open. Wolves games at six a.m. Right, it's right. Place where you act. That's how yeah. much so people love their woke up games, you know. And and we've been watching uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, so like their stuff is is you know. I said we we watch everything all around the clock. So, yeah, exactly. but we're very lucky to be um, on the West Coast when it comes to these types of things. So yeah. it's definitely it's something we should definitely bring up on the Hoppy Hour as to uh, because I had I I had a um I not a. Not a angry discussion, but a loud discussion with someone on uh, uh, the metro train coming back from a Dodger game about how Major League Baseball does not build stars. And I said, um, you know, when players come, uh, like for instance, like would kids want to go see Bryce Harper? Would they say, "Mom, I need to go see Bryce Harper"? You know, it's like. But I remember, like when we went to, like you were saying, uh, Kevin, it's like Reggie Jackson, uh, even yeah. Barry Bonds. You know, going and see these Ichiro. Yeah, no, I can tell you when I was a kid, you you knew players on every team. Yeah, you knew the studs on the Royals and the Minnesota Twins teams. You didn't follow, but you knew who these guys were. And I don't know if that was because of this week in baseball. I don't know that because we we collected baseball cards and looked at the stats. Like yep. that's what was for me was card for sure. Yeah, you know I don't know if we read more, but it, you know I, I don't know if kids are, are are acting like that now. I can't tell you some studs on on certain teams anymore. No, nope. but uh, you know, but and I can still tell you. You bring up a name, I'm like, oh yeah, he played for the Royals, eighty three exactly. to eighty seven, exactly, yeah, like one eighty two. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's like remembering your your friend's phone numbers from the nineteen eighties. You know, yeah. it's still inside that head of yours. Yeah, All right. Good. So that, that is the show we have for you today. Uh, running a little bit late, but it's been a great show. So uh, thank you, Mark, uh, for joining us tonight. Uh, please Anytime. tell us where we can find you. Uh, you can find me at Ballpark Hunter at my YouTube channel. You can check out my videos and subscribe. Uh, this week's video is me uh, showing a little bit golf at a minor league ballpark in Indianapolis. So if you want to see that, go to Ballpark Hunter on YouTube. And then you can also follow me on Twitter at Ballpark Hunter and check out StadiumJourney.com. We have great reviews and stories about ballparks from all around the world, plus other sports. Awesome. And uh, it's been a pleasure. Th this whole week has been all about you. So it's like I, I really all right. appreciate all your involvement and uh, you've been <laughs> a, a great contributor. So thank you so much. I, I'm really glad to keep striking my um, neck with you let's do it let's do yeah, it yeah yeah <laughs> exactly you you, you yeah. brought a lot to the table so we appreciate all, right. all your knowledge uh, angelo anything that you wanted to plug 
Um, not much. You know, you can, uh, you know, you can find me, uh, almost every night on, uh, uh big teach 45s live Twitch and Facebook stream playing uh, call of duty Warzone. Um, he just, uh, hooked up his PS five a couple nights ago. So, um, you can catch me there. Um, I was trying to, uh, for today's beer, I was trying to locate, uh, Los Guerrero Cerveza in uh, honor and memory of uh, Eddie Guerrero's passing. His uh, the anniversary of his was that his the 15 year anniversary of his passing um, just passed here a couple days ago. So one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. So um, uh, rest in peace, Eddie, and uh, thank you for all your contributions to the world of uh, crazy world of professional wrestling. Yeah, that's awesome. And a uh, shout out to Puerto Vallarta, uh, which is uh, actually, uh, Kevin, you, you'll get a kick out of this. Angela told me that their COVID uh, policies are much better than the United States, which is uh, equally horrifying, uh, but also gratifying. <laughs> All right. <laughs> my, 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 uh, my bag has never been cleaner. Oh, that's, okay. that's awesome. So, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> Shout out to Puerto Vallarta. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, what, where can we find you? Oh, me. Sorry. Uh, for myself, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Lock and Lol. That's L O K N L O L L. I say all the time if you like beer, support your local brewery. If you like your major league team, support their minor league affiliate. Oh, I saw independent baseball hat right there. Look at, look at that cool hat Mark has. Yeah. If there's yep. an in independent team around you, support them. Yep. And because College would that too. Yeah. And I'm gonna go off the subject here. Michael and I, every Tuesday night when we're done here, if you grew up in the eighties or the nineties, oh yeah, look up um Museum of Home Video. They do a show every Tuesday at 7 30 on their Twitch channel where they just show just a hodgepodge of just random stuff. And like last week they showed Pee Wee Herman on on the David Letterman show before he got famous. Just to give so an example good. stuff so they good. show. But that's something that Michael and I always watch after we finish here. Yeah. And what, what what's tonight? They have some good stuff tonight. Um, they're supposed to be doing a trip to Bill Paxton. And what's that called? The Museum uh, of Museum of Home Video. It's on their Twitch page, Museum of Home Video. Tonight they're gonna to do a tribute to a channel called Channel Z. It was like a pay uh cable channel in the eighties. Oh, okay. And they're gonna to tribute to Bill Paxton, and I believe they're doing some stuff with Bill Hader. I remember that off the top of my head. Yes, uh, really fun random stuff. Bill Paxton, uh, Chet from Weird Science, uh, and also, uh, also he was in a Simple Plan. He's also in Terminator. Game over, man. Yep, yep. yep. So, uh, so de definitely check him out. So, yeah. there you go. Alien. Yeah, check yeah. that out. It, it starts. It starts in about two minutes. So we're gonna get yeah. out of here. So uh, we will not see you at the ballpark. <laughs> we hope to soon. We'll we will not see you at the brewery. We hope to soon. Uh, but we'll see you here. Uh, potentially, we might have a show, uh, the Hoppy Hour, this weekend. So check for that. Uh, but we'll definitely see you here for the Beer Baseball Broadcast next Tuesday. Good night. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you next week. Take care.